Today we're going to talk about how you can maximize free $10,000 of ad grants for your church or your ministry. Are you ready? Because it's time. You're listening to the Church Digital Sidekick Podcast, part of the TCD Podcast Network. Hey heroes, my name is Tom Pounder, a very sick Tom Pounder at the moment with my allergies. And this is the Church Digital Sidekick Podcast. This is the podcast where I bring on ministry leaders and we talk about digital tools and tips that will help you do ministry more effectively in this very digital and online world. And today I'm excited to bring a first-time guest on. His name is Jesse Carbo, and he's from Miami, Florida. And we got connected through Jeff Reed, but Jesse is someone who works with Google Ad Grants. Him and his uh, company, they work with Google Ad Grants, and they help churches discover how to maximize that $10,000 of free ad grant money. You heard me right. $10,000 per month of free money that Google gives you to do ads. So how can you do them? What are they about? How can you do them? What are some best tips and practices? Jesse comes on and he shares with me about that. But before we get started with that, I do want to highlight the church.digital. At the church.digital, we have lots of coaching, cohorts, blogs, podcasts, all designed to help you and your online ministry, whether it's a digital ministry with in-person and online, whether it's strictly just online or whether there's a digital component to it, the church.digital gives you weekly insights on how you can do ministry more effectively today. So if you've never checked out the church.digital, check it out right now. All right, heroes, well, let's get into the interview right now with Jesse Carbo. All right, with me right now is Jesse Carbo. Jesse, how are you? I'm good. How are you, Tom? (laughs) <laughs> I'm doing good. Other than my allergies, yeah, yeah, uh, I apologize in advance for my allergies, but uh, I'm doing great. I'm do- happy for uh, warmer weather, but warmer weather where you're at, that's like year round, right? <laughs> yeah, that's yes. I mean, for people coming, you know, who live in the north, the Midwest, yes, it, it is pretty much year round. But for us down here in Miami, you know, when it gets below 70, everyone's getting out the furry boots and the heavy snow jackets. So, but uh, yeah, it's it's uh, it's rare that it ever hits like below 40 here in Miami. Oh my gosh. Um, how long have you lived in Miami? Well, I was born and raised here. So uh, going back to 1975, uh, there were some periods of time where I lived like Orlando, West Palm Beach yeah. for college and for different church plants that we did. But, but for the most part, my whole life, yeah. That's awesome. And that's awesome that you're born in 1975. I'm a 1975 baby myself. Uh, so yeah, right. it's, a, it's a really good year. It is, yeah. Um, well, that's great. Well, I know you. I've met you through uh, Jeff Reed. Uh, yeah. And, you know, uh, how do you know Jeff? Jeff and I know each other through local church connections here on the ground in Miami. Yeah. Um, before the church.digital was born, you know, we knew of each other for different ministry connections. And then I remember before the church.digital kind of launched, we sat at a Starbucks coffee and I was sharing with him some visions that I had for Miami for church planning networks. And he was sharing his vision for like, you know, digital and online church planning. And man, we just like encouraged each other. And he went off and did his thing. And I went off and did my thing. And we just sort of kept in touch all throughout all of this. So, well, that's awesome. Well, that's great. I, I love Jeff. I met him even a little bit before COVID um, happened uh, and he uh, and I have become friends. I've actually met him in person a few times now before we were just Twitter friends. And now I've been able to meet him in person. Okay. So um, we talked about how, you know, Jeff a little bit, but tell people uh, what you do and and how you got started in that. Yeah. So about a year ago um, I had taken a sabbatical um, from full-time vocational ministry um, as, as a executive pastor and, and as, a, as a network leader with church planners. And um, we, were, we were praying through like, what's another way? Like, what, where, what is God calling us to do? And, and so this idea kind of came up, like, why don't we help? And, and obviously following Jeff and you guys and some of the stuff that you guys are doing in the digital space and the metaverse, one of the conversations that came up was, how can we help churches? In my church planning days, all the way back to like 2006, I had learned, I had picked up some skills in digital marketing and, I, and mainly done that in the small business world to kind of generate some revenue, revenue on the side as a side hustle so that I could support my family as we planted churches so that, you know, fundraising is just hard, you know, and, and we planted a church in 2008 during one of the 
hardest economic times of our country. And so, um, you know, digital marketing is fun and, 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 you know, it, it provided some, some revenue for us. And so someone asked like, well, why don't you help churches with their marketing? And I was like, man, I hate trying to sell and pitch pastors, you know, like, a, you know, because churches notoriously are struggling financially. And someone came to me and said, well, but do churches have that $10,000 grant from Google? And I was like, oh yeah, there is that, there is that grant. Like, no, that's a good question. I don't know if churches are using that. I knew the church I was at was not using it. So our church went ahead and applied for it and we got it and we started learning some stuff through it. And, um, and then I went to a uh, exponential conference, uh, one of the regional gatherings in Murfreesboro yeah. in Nashville. And uh, we just started asking pastors, like every pastor that walked through the door, like, do you have the grant? Do you know about the grant? 90, I would say 90 to 95% of the answers was, no, we don't have it. And no, we don't know about it. Like, mm -hmm. you know, tell us more. Um, and then kind of a God thing, you know, I guess the Lord sort of confirming for us, like, this is the path he wanted us to go down. Um, the leaders of Exponential came up to us and said, hey, if you're serious about the grant, we have it. We don't have anyone to manage it for us. Would you consider partnering with us to manage the grant? We would love to leverage that more intentionally and effectively. And so we came back to Miami from that. We were like processing, like, okay, a bunch of churches don't know about it. This is a great way to help churches because it's literally free money. Yep. Um, and at the end of the day, like, you know, I know most pastors, most churches, they want to reach people. They genuinely want to reach the lost. They genuinely want to reach more people in their community. And this is, a, this, this could be, we started thinking this could be a really effective way for them to begin doing that. And so um, talked to Jeff for a little while. I was like, hey, how many of the guys that are planting churches online are using something like this? And he's like, man, I really haven't heard about that. And so we just started drafting like a bunch of ideas together. And, you know, again, while piloting with our local church, you know, how it works and, you know, you know the, the results and what it would really do. And, um, and so from there, um, you know, we had to come up with a name for it. And we were like trying to figure out like, what are we going to call this thing? Um, and so we called it the Digital Missions Project because we, we feel, we, we, have a, we have a deep sense that um, the mission field is digital. You know, and I've got a lot of buddies from, from college, Bible college, that they went off to the mission field to deep, dark jungles of Papua New Guinea and South America and all over the world. And the concept of missions is, is I think for a lot of us in the American church is, is a kind of a foreign concept. Like we know, we think missionally, it's like about evangelism, but, but true missions, like when you go to a foreign country and you got to reach people that know nothing about God or, you know, Christianity, it's like that whole concept. So so we're just like, man, that's what it is. It's like, it's a mission field. The, the digital space really is a mission field. And we want to have those conversations with pastors and say, okay, here's a way we can help fund that missional opportunity through the grant. And um, yeah, and the rest is history. You know, we've been helping some churches. We've been helping Exponential Leadership Network and hoping to help hundreds of more churches with that. That's awesome. Okay, so that's another connection you and I have, not just with Jeff Reed, but with Exponential, because our church is really involved with a lot of Exponential stuff. And when oh. they do the, the national conferences, we send a lot of people down there to help support it and, and whatnot. Um, so that's really cool. I, I had no idea that you were connected in that way. Yeah, we love we love partnering with them. They're great people. Yeah. Um, okay, so th it's really cool. I like th and we're going to talk about um, your uh, digital missions project stuff right now because the uh, uh, now my experience is when I work with a lot of digital communicators and they all know about the Google Ad grants, but their issue is I don't even know how to use it. It just seems so hard for me to do and, and whatnot. And so I want us today to just kind of walk through a little bit of that process, but then you're also going to share at the very end about how it's a really simple way too for them to get connected with you. But let's start talking about how you get started with it. What, what do you need to do? What do you need to know? Yeah, no, it's a great question. I mean, you know, to, 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 to be a little bit simplistic, you have to know how to run Google ads, right? And so just like, you know, I know Facebook ads gets a lot of attention. I know a lot of churches are, are, are spending money on Facebook with Facebook ads or Instagram ads and the new popular things like Insta, um, um, TikTok ads. Um, there's a lot of return that comes on that because there's a lot of attention that, that people throw that, that way. 
Um, but the thing about Google, um, you know, Google Ads has been around forever. The grant has been around since 2003. As a matter of fact, um, yeah, they, they, they actually used to grant more money than 10,000. Um, but, but if you can learn how to run Google Ads, then you, can learn, then you can know how to run the grant. Now, the grant itself does have rules. It has some expectations. For example, there's a performance-based metric that they require that the, the click-through rate or the conversion rate um, has to be at least 5% on average of, of your campaigns. Um, the, the national average with Google Ads is about 2.5-3%. So they kind of raise the bar for people to get this free money um, with us at the Digital Missions Project, we're seeing about a 10% click-through rate. Um, it's not hard to get it if you know, like the key, you know, if, if you're creating the right campaigns for the right keywords. So one way to think about this, you know, and, and again, this might be too high level from, for, for what you're asking. So feel free to interrupt me and help me clarify. Um, somebody goes to Google and they search a term. Now, the most obvious kind of campaign that, probably churches and pastors are thinking about is like, you know, someone who's looking for a church. And so someone might type in church near me or church in my city, right? Like, you know, church in Miami, Florida, or church in Miami, Dade County. And there's a list of, of results. You know, some of those are paid sponsored ads and some of those are organic. It could be the map pack, you know, the, the Google map, or it could be, you know, down at the bottom, you know, the, the different websites. Um, what Google, what the Google ad grant does is it essentially pays for ads so that you can be in the sponsored section. Um, it, it, you know, not again, that's the, that's, that's the like most obvious low hanging fruit is the church near me type thing. But what about people who are not searching for a church? What about people who are going to Google asking questions like how to survive a divorce mm. or how to, how to grieve the death of a loved one. Like there are people literally going to Google and asking all kinds of questions uh, for, about life situations, about spiritual issues that they don't have anywhere else to go. Either, either they don't have anywhere else to go or they're too ashamed or too afraid to go and actually ask someone. And so because Google's so easily accessible to everyone on their phone, they go to Google and they ask the question to see what results come back. And what you'll often find is like when, for example, you know, in our slide deck, when we present things, we'll show like somebody will search how to grieve death. And what often comes up is some secular counseling agencies. And what we're saying is that your church can have a, a specific landing page that answers that question with that keyword. And then we take the grant money and we pay for a campaign with ads that point people with those keywords to that specific landing page so that there's online engagement that ultimately turns into in-person relationship. Now, when, when I say in-person relationship, that could be digitally in-person, meaning there's a connection, like you and I right now are digitally connecting in person, right. right? But if I flew to Virginia or you flew to Miami, we could, we could connect in person, in person, physically in person, whatever the method or the model of your ministry, it's about reaching people where they're at. And that's, that's one of the unique things that the Google ad grant does is it pays for those Google ads so that you can meet people where they're at. It's, it's intent-based marketing versus um, interruption-based marketing, which is typically what Facebook or any of the social media ads are. You're kind of counting on, you're hoping that the algorithm is like a matchmaker, you know, that they're matching the interests that you're kind of clicking off in the box of the dashboard, you know, and some, oh, oh yeah, this guy has an interest in what you're looking for, and then kind of pairing up. So, so that when your ad pops up, now it does work. It's just Google's a very different approach. The Google ads are a very different approach. So does that make sense? Oh yeah, no, it makes a lot of sense. And I, I wanna highlight two things here that you uh, said is that I, I think you're right. The low hanging fruit is like, if you're looking for a church near me and people do that, you know, if they're traveling or, or whatnot or in the, in the area and they want to uh, find a church, but they're not asking that question a lot anymore. We live in a post-Christian world. And they yeah. are looking, if they're going through a divorce, how do I survive a divorce or how do I, and by you mastering this Google ad grant stuff, you can be addressing it and your, your, your church can be up there, you know? And it, it, so I think that's really, really huge. And it's kind of a game changer. And then the second thing is, again, you mentioned Facebook ads and I like to use Facebook ads, but the reality is I'm paying for it. I'm paying for Facebook yeah. ads. With Google ad grants, they're giving you money. You're not paying for it, right? Right, that's right. 
Yeah, the I think the other thing that I'll add as well is if if anyone's familiar with what Glue is doing through the He Gets Us campaign. Now, obviously, their marketing is really diverse. They're they're doing marketing on you know both digital and analog levels. I mean, they're doing a bunch of stuff. They're doing print and digital. Um, but a good example is they're they're reaching people based on felt needs. People come to a, find a landing page um, and they're filling out a form. And then when they filled out that form, they're distributing those prospects to different churches in those zip codes. What if you could essentially replicate the same concept right in your community? Now, every community, every city, every county, every state is going to have different search volume for different things. Like maybe where you live, Tom, the search volume around prayer requests might be higher or lower than in Miami, depending on what's going on. Because you have access to $10,000 a month, you can literally run so many different campaigns, so many different ads. What I have often seen churches do when they have the grant is they'll run one or two campaigns and then they'll set it and forget it. And, and it's not really a set it and forget it kind of approach. You really have to engage. You have to constantly do the research to find out what are the keywords, because there are certain keywords in your community that might have high search volume one month and then might be very low search volume the next month, depending on the season, depending on what's going on. Um, but being able to know, have that information and then being ready to build out those campaigns with landing pages. And then I would also say part of what we do is we build follow-up nurture sequences. So if somebody comes to a landing page, we're trying to get people to fill out a form, name, email, phone number, something. Um, after, you know, after the landing page does its job of building trust, and, and, and building authority and, and winning them over, if they give us their name and email, then we want to nurture that relationship over a period of time. There's a series of emails that goes out to them so that the relationship can move beyond just some online engagement to some kind of in-person relationship. Yeah. Uh, again, I want to highlight just a few things that you said, uh, because I think it's really important. Uh, Jesse did not misspeak. It is $10,000 a month. Every month in perpetuity, by the way, there's not an end to it. As long as you fill out the survey every year that they, they request that you fill out to let them know how it's going, they will continue to award that to you every year, month after month. And so just think about $10,000 of ad revenue or ad money that you can use for Google, which is the biggest search engine in the world. Um, and so you have access to that. So that's really important. And then I want to just, can you just break it down real quick of with keywords? How would someone find out what keywords are, are trending in yeah. their area? Yeah, the, the simplest way to do that is to just Google, Google Keyword Planner, Google Keyword Planner. And it will take them to one of Google's many tools that's free and available to everybody that will, they could just type in you know, different keywords and different ideas. And this is part of what we do is we'll get on a call with the pastor or the communications director at the church and we'll say, all right, tell us about the kind of activities that you guys have. You know, so let's say a church has like Financial Peace University or they have some sort of divorce recovery group. Okay, great. That means you have something to offer the neighborhood. So then we'll start Google, we'll start researching in the Google Keyword Planner. There are other tools like SEM Rush and Ahrefs. I mean, there's a lot of tools out there that you can research keywords that will basically tell you, okay, divorce recovery, that keyword, how many in your, and then you can type in and say, okay, divorce recovery, and then look in your city or look in, I mean, you can look at the national number, you can look at the state, you can look at the city, you can look at a two mile radius around your church. It has those options in the keyword planner and it'll tell you, you know, what the search volume is. Now it'll show you an average. Cause like I said before, sometimes it's higher certain months over others. Um, but you'll see the average. And, and oftentimes, if you're doing like a short distance, say two to 10 miles around the radius of your, of, of your location, um, I know this doesn't really apply to like the guys who are doing digital ministry like online because they literally, their radius is like the whole globe, right? Like they could be seeing, they could see the search volume around the world. Um, but if you were a local church in a building at a, you know, whether, whether you're portable or you had your own physical space, you, you can look around and say, okay, okay, around this area, there's a hundred people, you know, searching divorce recovery. And then you could target those ads to those hundred people on average every month. Yeah. And then the goal would be, okay, if there's a hundred people doing that search, let's try to get 10 of them to click on the ad. And of the 10 people that click on the ad, let's try to win over two of those people. 
And if you did that month after month, two times 12 months would give you like 25 new people that would engage with your ministry. And that's essentially Google's paying for that relationship. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we, we want to reach our communities. We want to reach the world. And this is just a great tool. Again, a free tool that we have uh, at our access. Okay. So tell me some best tips or practices that you would recommend, you know, in, in thinking through Google ad grants. Yeah. The, the, the first thing I would say is every campaign is equal to like a goal, right? So like, if we were to do a prayer campaign, we would have to, we would talk about like, what's the goal? What do we want to happen? Like, you know, it, for me, it's always about, I guess the best way I can summarize the first tip is always make it about adding value to people's lives mm. before you're ever asking anything from them, right? So if, so if, if in the back of your mind, you're like, yeah, but I want more butts in the seats, you know, whether it's yeah. digitally, I want more people, I want to see that number climb, you know, in my analytics, and I want to see more people show up to the online ministry versus, or whether it's in person, that's great. That, that is, yes, ultimately that's part of it. But the way to start is to think about how do I add value to people's lives? How do I, so if it's a prayer campaign, okay, the goal is we just want to pray for people. We want to let them know we love them, we care about them. And so every campaign needs to have its own specific landing page. Never, ever send people just to the homepage of your website. Um, it's, a, it's a big marketing, you know, boo-boo. It's a faux pas. It's like, it's like you don't want to just send people to a generic page that, isn't really connected. So think about someone's Googling, I need prayer. And then they click on your ad and then it just goes to the homepage of your website. And there's nothing on the homepage of your website that says anything about prayer. If you know, you want a specific landing page that says, do you need prayer? We, we will pray. It would be our privilege to pray for you. Some scriptures about prayer, um, you know, and then build some trust and some relationship, you know, so that you can say, here we are. And then here's a form, submit your prayer request and then follow up with them that says, so that would be the second tip is always think about how you're going to follow up. Yep. So if somebody comes to that ad, that landing page, always, always, always find a way. Okay. Think about how can we follow up with people? It's not enough to just get them to click on the ad. A lot of people look at the Google analytics and they go, Oh, look, a thousand people hit our webpage. To me, that's a vanity metric. Like it doesn't really matter if a thousand people, if a million people hit your webpage, what matters is how many people actually engage with you. Mm -hmm. Right. That's the real, that's the real metric you want to look for. Um, the third thing I would say too, is either get into a community of other people who are doing this so that you can learn from each other or connect with someone like me who, who's got experience doing this kind of stuff, who can give you ideas because it's always evolving, right? Like the rule, Google's always changing the rules. Yep. So you want to stay connected to somebody somewhere that's going to keep you updated. If you're a pastor, communications director, Clearly, you're busy. There's a lot of things going on in the church and in the ministry. If you're an online church planning pastor, you got a lot. You got a lot going on. There's discipleship. There's evangelism. There's care. There's there's people's lives. You know, are in your face. They real. You know, you got to spend time with them. So stay connected to a community that can kind of keep you up to date about what's going on with Google. Yeah. See, the one thing I love about technology is that it's always changing. Always. It's, it's always improving. But then it, it's always messing with me too. I mean, the, the moment I get used to my iPhone iOS, I yeah. love how it's operating. They change the iOS on me. And the, you know, and so yeah. it's better in this way, better. And you yeah. have to relearn it. And I, again, I just know with me working with uh, Facebook ads so much that it, they're tweaking that stuff all the time. And I'm like, wait, where did this go? Wait, where did that yeah. go? What is yeah. happening? So you do really, I mean, again, Google ad grants and, and the time I fooled around with it, uh, you know, you have to really get familiar with it. And, yeah. and so you could start utilizing it and, and kind of maximizing it uh, for it. Well, talk to me a little bit about, again, what you guys do and the kind of the course that you guys offer. Yeah. So we're, we basically have a free course that we give away. It's a, we call it a mini course. There's only about five videos. Each video is about three minutes long. And basically what it does is it walks any nonprofit, you know, any church step-by-step, step, how to apply for and receive the Google ad grant. And so a lot of people, you know, it's like, oh yeah, I'm interested in getting it, but it's, it can be a little bit confused. I would say getting the grant is more confusing oftentimes uh, than actually running the grant. Um, you know, you can, you can go to Skillshare.com and get certified in Google ads and learn how to manage Google ads. And, you know, maybe 
Maybe there's a pastor listening right now that's looking for a side hustle. This is a great side hustle. Learn how to manage Google ads. You can do this for businesses. You can do this for your church. But um, getting the grant itself, there's like, there's three steps, essentially. You know, you have to go to techsoup.org and you have to join that and, and get validated as a nonprofit. And then you take the validation token from there and go to Google nonprofit and apply there. But our mini course um, would basically walk you step by step. And it's free. There's no obligation. Like if you go there and take the course and there's no obligation to work with us, we're just happy to help. We, I want to see a thousand churches get the grant and use the grant. So we would love to do that. And they can, they can get that at our website at digitalmissionsproject.com. That's great. I will include that link in the show notes and, and every um, like that as well. And I would encourage you to do it. I mean, again, it, it, to me, some of the things is it just seems so confusing at times. Yeah. So what, what kind of encouragement would you give that person who's maybe juggling a bunch of different plates and, you know, doing it, like how how would you encourage them to say just we just got to do it? Yeah, I mean, look if if you you know we typically work with two kinds of um, churches. We work with churches that have an, um, either a volunteer or someone on staff uh, that can do about fifty percent of the work, and and we provide a lot of coaching and support. Um, and then we do kind of some of the other stuff that's more technical and a little bit more difficult. Um, um, but then there's some churches that don't have anybody. They don't have the volunteer. They don't have, and, and they're willing to just say, hey, can Digital Missions Project just handle this whole thing for us? You know, um, my encouragement to anyone that's listening to this would be first, get the grant. You know, we can, you can figure out the rest, right? Whether you're going to have someone on staff learn how to do it, um, whether you're going to partner with us or anybody like us to help you manage it. The first step is get the grant. And, and, and it really is kind of simple to get it. it. It's complicated in the sense that like, there's like three different websites you have to go to, but, um, but once you have it, it's like, now it's possible to be able to figure out, okay, there might be a volunteer. Uh, there might be a staff person. Um, you can always call us and you know schedule a discovery call with us. We'd love to share ideas and thoughts with you. I mean, we really are in this um, for kingdom expansion. We want to see more people. Our, our dream is to see a hundred people, a hundred churches reach each reach ten thousand people with the gospel using the Google Ad Grant. That would be a like in the next three years, that would be amazing. Um, and so, depending on you know, I've worked with different churches from different denominations and tribes. So, whatever your model is, we'll have that conversation to say like, oh hey, let's 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 leverage the Google Ad Grant in a way that makes the most sense for you and for your ministry. So, I would just say start by getting the grant. That would be the big thing. Yeah, that's great. Um, Again, I just think there's ten thousand dollars every month for you to to figure it out. Do you is there actually do, do you have to sh spend a minimum amount of money at, by chance, or is it just hey just start using it and it just spends? Is it possible to maximize it all to ten thousand? You get the ten thousand every month. Yeah, that's a great question. I get that question all the time. First of all, there is not a minimum. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of confusion around this idea, like, does Google require you to spend a certain amount? I mean, what Google requires you to do, for example, is they require you to log into your dashboard once a week, right? Now, they're not going to, like, shut it off the first week you don't log into your dashboard. But if you have the grant and you're launching campaigns and running ads and you abandon it, you don't run it, like, after a few months, like, they're going to see that and they're going to they're gonna kind of ping you and say, hey, what's going on? Like, we don't see you engaging with your ads and your campaigns. Um, so it's important to, to engage on a regular basis uh, with your campaigns. Um, it is possible to maximize the $10,000. And I would even say it's possible to even request more money. If oh. you maximize the 10,000 and they see that you're doing a good job with it and you say, hey, we'd actually like more. It is, it is common knowledge that they will give you more if they see that you're doing a good job with it. Their, their aim is that you would use it in a way, right on their website it even says, um, they want you to recruit people, they want you to raise money, and they want you to raise awareness, right? So if they see that you're doing those three things, and they're, they're going to be willing to, to give you more money. Now, this is, this, is, this is the caveat. How do you spend the whole 10000 Usually for churches, they're going to have to do lots of campaigns. That's what, this is where they get in trouble is they'll only do one or two campaigns, and they'll set it and forget it. They need to constantly do. So what we try to do is we try to launch a new campaign every month for every church that we work with. Yeah. That way, over time, they're getting to it because it's the issue is the search volume, right? Like 
like I need prayer as a, as a search term might only have a hundred or so people searching in your, in your community. So in order to get the spend, if, if, if a click is like worth $5 per click and you're only getting 10 people a month to click on that campaign, you're okay. So you're spending 50 bucks a month on that. Okay. We need to run more campaigns to start spending and maximizing the, the, the money that's available to you. And that's, that's what we're trying to do is help churches maximize it by creating more. It, it, think of it as like, if anybody likes to fish, the more hooks in the water, right? The more chances of you catching fish, yeah. right? So it's, and it's not just, I mean, you can put a bear hook in the water. I, I have actually caught a fish with just a bear hook, but that's not usually recommended. You want to put the right hook with the right bait. So if you have the right hooks with the right bait and you have multiple of them in the water, the more likely you are to catch more fish. So this is the idea. That's a great illustration. Um, that, that is great. So you, wait, you are a fisherman? <laughs> well, I live in Miami, right? We should all, it's like saying, do we go to the beach? I mean, yes, I've been on a boat and I've thrown a line in the water a time or two, <laughs> but, but I wouldn't, I, I don't know that I could teach you anything, Tom, about fishing. You're probably better at it than I am. Uh, I, w I wouldn't say that, but you know, the, yeah, I, I have been fishing a few times. So, well, Jesse, this has been awesome. This has been very encouraging. Uh, once again, tell me uh, your website uh, and where people can connect with you. Yeah, they can connect with me at Digital Missions, that's plural with an S on the end, project, digitalmissionsproject.com. Um, and last question for you, are you on Twitter? I am on Twitter. You, and now you're going to ask me what my handle is. I haven't um, posted on Twitter in a while. Oh, gosh. Uh, I think it's either Jesse Carbo or Jay Carbo. Yeah, uh, it's Jesse Carbo or Jay Carbo, yeah. I'll find you out. That Again, that's part of the way I met Jeff Reed was uh, through Twitter, so... Uh, I, I, yeah. Well, Jesse, this is awesome. This is encouraging. Um, and uh, thanks for sharing with us today. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Okay. So what did you think? What stood out to you? What encouraged you? What questions do you have? Definitely put them in the comment section below or hit me up on Twitter at TA Pounder. This Google Ad Grants is such a huge opportunity for churches to be reaching their community. Google is a huge search engine. They've got lots of reach and you can reach your community using these ad grants. So learn more about it. Hit up Jesse and his company if you want some extra help. He's got very affordable rates and he'd love to help you and your church. At least take his free course. Okay, His free course will be fantastic for you to get more information on that and then link up with him in the other ways too. I'll have, again, I'll have all his uh, links in the show notes. So just click on that and you can get connected with Jesse today. All right, here's well, thanks so much for joining me for the Church Digital Psychic Podcast. As always, if you enjoy the podcast, subscribe to it. It's on YouTube, it's on Apple, it's on Google, Amazon, it's on all those podcast platforms. So just click and uh, subscribe to the platform you have, and then you can get these whenever they come out uh, throughout the year. All right, here's well, thanks so much for being with me today. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Until next time, have a great one.